we're going to talk about bug out bags. So th there's so many variations on what you would need to put in your bug out bag, depending on the scenario. So I'm going to give you a real quick, sim simple scenario right here so you can kind of wrap your head around what we're doing. All right, this is your city. Wherever you live, this is, uh, this is Gotham. All right, so Gotham's been hit with a massive earthquake and um, lots of burning buildings, destroyed infrastructure, and there's four bridges leading into the city and they've all been taken down. Um, within about 20 miles of the city has been devastated also. All right, so you're in here, you're hunkering down and you're trying to wait for um, public services and the government to come feed you and rescue you. So after a couple of days, as resources get scarce and criminal gangs start taking whatever the fuck they want, then you decide, look, I gotta get out. So you can walk across this bridge, you just can't drive. So you have a brother in this scenario who lives like 50 miles away. So you're gonna walk there through an, a rural environment. Nobody's looking for you, nobody's tracking your cell phones. Take the, take the tinfoil off your head. Um, but you are trying to avoid contact with people because as resources get scarce, people are willing to do a lot of bad shit to feed their kids, all right? So that's the scenario we're doing. We're gonna talk initially about what, what to wear and then we're gonna pack our bag and, and uh, to, to deal with this scenario. All right, let's do it. All right, so let's talk about what you're wearing. Um, in this scenario, the, uh, the temperature's a little bit cold, but not, not terrible. So when you step off, when you start walking, you need to be cold before you step off. A, a, common, no, a common mistake people make is they, they snivel up, especially when they get out of a sleeping bag in the morning, put a lot of layers on, and then within half a mile, they're stripping things off. So ideally, a light jacket, a light windproof jacket, a t-shirt, or a thermal top. Um, I like this one, it was issued. Um, the, uh, some comfortable pants that you can lift your leg on. Jeans are awful. They're like the worst thing you can possibly wear because they shrink and then you, they, they restrict movement. All right, good pair of boots. These are Merrells, I had them for a while. I tape up, duct tape, I tape up my laces so they won't come undone. And I'm wearing smart wool socks, nice, nice uh, good socks. Look, there's no such thing as waterproof, except for your skin. So you're going to get wet sooner or later. So you need a light pair of boots that dry off quickly. It's about what, what you, you can expect. All right, I've got a good army belt on, because I like it. And I can clip in here if I ever need to like descend down a rock. I'm carrying a, a Glock 17 on, on my hip. It's, uh, it's not super accessible, but I, I, with, with this, as opposed to uh, appendix carry, I can put my uh, rucksack strap underneath it. It'll keep it up high and it, it won't restrict me. Um, I've got this here in my pocket. This is a big lighter and a multi-tool. And the reason I attach it to myself is I'll never ever lose it. I'll never put it down. If I lend it to somebody, they can't take it. It's attached to me, right? Um, I've also got this, which is a little heavy for a knife, but I, I just really like it. The Spyderco knives, I used to have them. They're super light. You put it in your pocket and you forget all about it. Um, all right, so also for security, I've got this. This is a titanium revolver 38, and I can keep it in my pocket like this. So as I'm hiking, um, I have access to this. I can fire it from inside my pocket if I need to, but I uh, have it ready to go, and it weighs almost nothing. So it's nice to have. All right, let's talk about uh, jackets again. Like I said, Nice uh, windproof jacket. This is another good one. This is made by Haran, which is uh, the clothing company for Tier Tactical. And it's really cool little uh, windproof jacket that rolls up really, really small. Kind of cool. Uh, just another top for, for movement. Uh, radio, if you're if you have somebody else you're you're talking to, compass, GPS, and maps absolutely critical. Pace count beads, spare mag for my pistol, my phone. I usually I would put it I would turn it off, and I would put it in this waterproof case. 
and st stow it. Pistol, some gum, a decent watch, little little cardinal direction compass, headlamp, and a tourniquet. Okay, so that's all I got on my person. Baseball hat, and uh, so let's go look at what we've got. Oh, uh, one more thing, Vinny, come here. So for security, I've got this, and I've got this, and I've got that. Vinny, sit, fire, fire, good boy, quiet, down, good boy, all right. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, the equipment in the go bag. Let's talk about the bag first. This is the bag I chose. Uh, before we start, I didn't buy anything. I just grabbed stuff that was around the shop and I raided Mike's stash. Uh, this was Mike's bag. He had his fly fishing equipment in, so I stole it. Uh, it's got multiple compartments. It's fairly rugged, and it's about the right size for a 72-hour bug out bag. Now, if I'm gonna stay longer in the woods, if you look over here, I got multiple options. But if I took this, which is my old commando pack from uh, Ireland, I've had this thing for like 30 years. <laughs> I love it. Um, I'm missing the belt. If anybody wants to send me a belt. But if I took that, I would fill it, and it would weigh 100 pounds. Same with this North Face uh, ruck. This is a smaller one. I can't even remember who makes it, but uh, it's just one compartment, and it's a pain in the ass to get in and out of. And then this is the uh, Tier Tactical Jungle Ruck. That's the SOCOM programmer record. I really like this. It's got that uh, the old Alice uh, frame, but it's carbon fiber. It's super light. It's very narrow for going through the jungle, and it's got some external pouches, but it's too military for what I'm doing. I want to kind of sort of look like I'm not an army guy, right? So I chose this 511 tactical bag. Um, again, it's probably not perfect, but we're going to make it work, all right? So that's the bag. I grabbed this sleeping bag out of Mike's place. It's a, it's a small, lightweight sleeping bag. Um, the temptation is to cinch this thing down and crank all these and make it really small. The problem is when you do that, it becomes a solid little rock and it's hard to put inside a, a backpack. So I leave it a little bit loose. I will put it in a trash bag and uh, stow it. Now, pack your, pack your bag, regardless of what the weather says, like it's going to be pouring rain. Everything in Ziploc bags, everything in trash bags, and you, you are going to get soaked. Just start with that mentality. Maybe that's growing up in Ireland, I don't know. But that's the way I always do it. So in a sleeping bag, uh, in a trash bag. Now, a sleeping pad is important. You can always use leaves and debris and stuff like that to kind of pad you and stop the, uh, Vinny, come, and stop the, uh, the coal coming up from the ground, but I like to have a sleeping pad. The problem is this is kind of big and bulky and hard to use. So what I did was I cut a piece off it, and this is Mike's, so I owe him, but Mike, I cut your sleeping mat, but Vinny had already eaten a hole in it anyway, so that's gone. So this is small. It's enough for my upper body, because I'm a little guy, and uh, it'll keep the, uh, the damp from coming up from the bottom. Now, for my legs and stuff like that, I will use uh, pine straw or whatever I can, I can uh, find. With this, I can stow. The, the full one, I can't. All right, so a power bank to charge my phone or my uh, ham radio, the pouch, a uh, couple of pistol mags, some ammo. That's uh, good bartering right there. We need ammo. Some Ziploc bags. This is a N95 mask. I just threw it in here just in case, but it's made by Tier Tactical. Um, it's really light, easy to store, and it's got a, a, a Velcro pouch, and you put the filter inside it. So actually a really cool little M N95 mask, topical. All right, let's talk about uh, jet boil, some fuel. Uh, I drink a lot of tea. I have to have my jet boil or cup. Insect repellent, a couple of Nalgene bottles, uh, army canteen. All right, baby wipes. Even though I have toilet paper, if you've never had monkey butt in the field, it's, uh, it's pretty bad. Baby wipes will be your friend, worth carrying. All right, so chow. I just grabbed a couple of Mountain House meals. I could probably survive on one a day, 
but uh, they're super light and easy to pack, so I took like four or five. This is dog chow for Vinny. I took one per day, and then if I need to, I can feed him some of my stuff. Extra trash bags. All right, let's look over here. I've got a field crap survival, uh, survival kit. That's got all your essential stuff in there. And if you don't know what's in that kit, then just go on the website and look at it. I got a first aid kit. This is for trauma. It's uh, pressure dressings, uh, tourniquet, and a few other things just for trauma. I've got, uh, water's not gonna be a problem. In route, we're gonna fill up, but I've got a couple of bladders that I will leave with full. These are Gore-Tex socks. I've had these things for a while, <laughs> but these are badass. You can wear these and uh, walk in them. They're breathable and uh, they're really nice because they'll keep your feet dry. If your feet have ever been wet for a long period of time, then, then you know what I'm talking about. But I've used these. I've also used trash bags on my feet. Not good to walk in, but good for the patrol base. All right? Um, so this is, God, how long? I had this thing 30 years or something. I've built OPs with it and everything. But this is a, a British Army piece of equipment. You can tell by the camel pattern. But it's called a fascia. And it's really cool. That's what she said. And I'm going to use it to, uh, I'm going to do some videos on building a, a, a shelter with it. But it's really cool. Um, it, it's it's the coolest pattern of camouflage ever, but that's a really cool piece of kit. Not sure where you can buy it. Um, wet weather bags, everything needs to be in a wet weather bag. Then these are all my clothes. So it's hard to tell what they are, so I wrote on it. These are long johns, uh, sweatshirt, a couple of t-shirts, some smart wool socks, a beanie cap, and a pair of gloves in here. Now for gloves, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of big, cumbersome gloves. I like to have dexterity. I like to be able to use my gun or my cooking utensils or whatever. So I just have these light ass gloves that they're, uh, they're just enough to keep your hands somewhat warm. But I can still do what I need to do, all right? But everything individually packed, if you think about I'm trying to get socks out and it's pouring rain. I don't want to open up my pack and let all that rain in. So everything's in individually um, insulated in, in Ziploc bags. Shit paper, bungees uh, for setting up my hooch. A little bit of 550 cord, a pair of binos. Uh, I need one of them collapsible bowls. Like I said, I didn't buy anything. Glasses if you need them. Wet weather gear. So this is... Uh, <laughs> I won this in a competition. I would never buy it. It's extremely expensive. This is our Terex Gore-Tex jacket and Gore-Tex pants. Now, I, I don't like to move in pants, in Gore-Tex uh, wet weather pants. So I'll usually just run the jacket. I like it to be long so the water runs off and then just wets my legs. But this is a, a fantastic jacket. I take the pants, even though I don't like to move in them, but they're good for the patrol base. If you're stopped, uh, and you're, you're pulling security, you're, it, it's good to be able to put them on. The other thing I have, I have long johns, thermal uh, pants. What we used to do is we used to take them, split them down the side, and then vel sew Velcro to them. So as you could take them on and put them off without taking your boots and pants off. You just drop your pants and then put them on and you can get a job as a male stripper on the weekend. You can rip that shit off. All right. talk about a couple of principles of packing a rucksack. Um, number one, the items you don't need very often, like my sleep gear is on the bottom here, um, but I have my, my basha, my big poncho thing, very accessible. In case I get into a position where I need to pull it out, hook it up in trees and give me some overhead cover while I set up my sleep area. So stuff I need often, like food or water or um, some of my survival items I have close and easy to, to find. My, my less frequently used items are buried. Um, heavy items are tight to my back and uh, so as it doesn't like pull me back downhill when I'm moving uphill. Um, 
I cinch down all my straps, make sure everything's buckled and everything's pulled tight. It just makes it neater and it stops it from snagging on bushes and stuff like that while I'm walking through um, tight undergrowth. Um, if this is like 28 pounds, so if it was bigger than this or heavier, I'd want a frame. Um, something like that, that jungle rock, something solid. Now you always want, I've seen people that, that cinch up these uh, waist straps and, and kind of secure them, they don't use them. They use everything on their shoulders. When you walk for a long period of time, that gets really, really painful on your shoulders. So what I do is I will tighten my shoulder straps and I'll tighten my waist strap. And then periodically I'll let my waist strap open up and I'll take the weight on my shoulders or I'll tighten my waist strap and, and loosen up my shoulders and let the weight take on my hips just to, to alternate to give it a, a little bit of a break um, obviously water accessible if you have a camelback it, it, it kind of reminds you to uh, to drink a lot if you have a water canteen stowed you have to stop pull it out people just tend not to do it uh, and keep walking uh, my navigation stuff are in my pocket my compass my, my GPS and my map um, and then I'm not, I'm not pulling everything out of this unless I absolutely have to, okay? So, um, yeah, that's it. A little bit of a tight struggle, but we got there. All right, so without water, we're at about 28 pounds right now. So we're gonna add, uh, once we step off, we'll add this camel back. I got a canteen, I got an algae in a bottle in here, and I got a separate bladder if I need it that I wouldn't fill unless I was close to a, a stream. Uh, packing a rucksack is not rocket science. You keep it flat to your back, you put the heavy stuff tight against your back and you make sure it's comfortable and nothing sticking in. I generally wouldn't, it was a little bit of a struggle to get everything in here. I wouldn't, I don't like going to the field with a rucksack that's bulging like this because when you open it up in the middle of the night in the pouring rain, it's very hard to get stuff back in. So I guess you could eat your chow to make more room. Vinny, stay. Um, but uh, yeah, about 28 pounds. Not too bad, I can carry that, 50, 100 miles, not that big a deal. But, uh, yep, if you've hit, hit me up with questions, I didn't put everything in here. Obviously, there's more stuff I could put in, so don't bother with the, the hey, you missed this and you missed this. This is what I need. Your might be different, okay? All right, that's it. Until next time, stay alert, stay alive.